1995's Ghost in the Shell, based on the manga, was a groundbreaking visual masterpiece and one of the most expensive anime of all time. Its success led to a franchise full of TV spin-offs, movies, video games, and an upcoming American live-action film starring Black Widow herself, Scarlett Johansson. All that being said, nothing quite beats the original cyberpunk spectacular. So here's seven things you didn't know about Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, probably. If you're a fan of Ghost in the Shell, there's a good chance its opening theme song is etched into your brain. Kind of like the first time you saw a sexy naked android. What you might not know about this haunting melody is it's a mashup of two drastically different styles. The lyrics are a wedding prayer in the ancient language of Yamato, and the music is a Bulgarian harmony but with traditional wavering Japanese notes. Composer Kenji Kawai wanted to use actual Bulgarian folk singers, but was unable to find any that would agree to sing the odd Japanese notes, and in Yamato. He ended up using the same Japanese choir he had used in another great anime, Ranmo One Half. While the movie version of Ghost in the Shell does a good job of telling the story written in the manga, there were some interesting changes made to the main character, Major Motoko Kusanagi. The film version of Kusanagi is celebrated by fans and critics alike for being a rejection of traditional gender roles. The animators of the film have explained her character as being feminine, but not female, and a lot of the major's dialogue is asexual in nature. However, in the manga, Kusanagi is far more feminine, sexual, charismatic, and younger than her film counterpart. Hiroyuki Okiura, the character designer for the film, decided to create an older body for the major in order to physically represent her more mature mental age. Her over-the-top and comedic facial expressions from the manga were also removed because director Mamoru Oshii wanted to create a more doll-like feel for the cyborg. This is further emphasized by the fact that Kusanagi almost never blinks. Seriously, just watch her. Yeah, that's creepy. That's real creepy, Kusanagi. <laughs> Director Mamoru Oshii was obsessed with creating realistic movement in every frame, and that included all of the firefights in the movie. He became so obsessed with realism that he took the production staff to Guam, yep, that Guam, to shoot guns at different materials to see how they react. And with how many different things get destroyed in the movie, I get the feeling they did a lot of research. This attention to detail is particularly evident in the final battle in the movie. The animators referred to the references they created in Guam and noted that there were no sparks when the bullets hit stone. Thus, a lot of flying debris in the museum does not have sparks. Hey, does that last scene we talked about remind you of the lobby scene in The Matrix? Well, it f***ing should! The classic story goes that when pitching the Matrix to Joel Silver, the Wachowski showed him Ghost in the Shell and said, we want to do that, but for real. The influences didn't stop there though. The chase through the bazaar in Ghost in the Shell is almost a shot-for-shot -shot recreation of this chase near the end of the Matrix. And one can easily assume that they cast Carrie Ann Moss because she's a dead ringer for the Major. Speaking of the Matrix, let's talk about those weird glowing numbers that like run all over everything in NeoVision. I'm talking about the code. In the Matrix, it's all art and design, however in Ghost in the Shell, the title graphics are representations of the creator's names. The names were injected into computer code that romanized the Japanese letters, then converted them into numerical code. And the code on screen that is presumably Project 2501 isn't just random gibberish. It's actual, properly syntaxed C code. Now quick, someone compile it and find out what it does. I'll wait. I got all day. I can sit in this booth until I, I get hungry. Or have to pee. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. That's happened already. Author Masamune Shiro always intended for his manga to be called Ghost in the Shell, but upon its release, his Japanese publishers preferred the name Kokaku Kidotai, or Mobile Armored Riot Police. The reason he wanted the title to be Ghost in the Shell was to pay homage to the 1967 philosophical psychology book The Ghost in the Machine by Arthur Kessler. This is where Shiro borrows the entire concept of the ghost, the cyborg's sense of self and identity. A lot of the to be or not to be philosophy of the story is riffing off of Arthur's thesis of primitive thoughts in a highly evolved brain. 
Is the brain independent of the body driving it through life, or is it a hugely layered structure built upon an ever-evolving primitive brain? And if so, how can the brain continue to evolve once it's completely artificial? Is a human who no longer has an organic body and mind still even a human? Now that you know that, isn't Ghost in the Shell a much more fitting description than Mobile Armored Riot Police? Quick question for you, where's this movie take place? It's Tokyo, right? Well, maybe not. While never specified in the movie, there has been a great deal of speculation about where the story takes place. It's generally assumed that since this is a futuristic anime, it must be Tokyo. On the other hand, there's been much fan speculation that it must take place in a futuristic Kobe. However, director Mamoru Oshii has stated that he used Hong Kong as a model for the futuristic city, going so far as using actual streets as references for the scenes. The Hong Kong theory gains further ground by the fact that everyone seems to drink San Miguel beer, a Filipino beer popular in much of Southeast Asia, and especially in Hong Kong. Hell, it's so good even Jet Li drinks it. Great move. Great beer. And those are seven things you probably didn't know about Ghost in the Shell. Did we miss anything? Do you prefer the Ghost in the Shell manga or the anime? Are you looking forward to the live action adaptation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and come back every Tuesday for more cool anime trivia and be sure to check out all of the great videos right here on Anime Vice.